All right, what's going on everyone? My name is Kevin Libwit and welcome to my short tutorial series on external applications for the CLC Genomics Server Platform. Uh, this is going to be the first of three videos in which I'll be detailing my approach to extend your workbench toolbox to include three open source bioinformatics tools that are heavily used in the public health space. That's IVAR, MAFT, and RaxML, just like you see on my screen here. And in this first video, I'll be focusing on writing an external application for IVAR, a uh, very powerful tool from the Anderson Laboratory over there at the Scripps Research Institute. Um, and there's a ton of functionality built into IVAR, but today we're going to focus on the IVAR trim command for our first external application. And um, IVAR trim is used for trimming primer read data from reference mapped alignments. Um, and this has been a very useful tool for laboratories that need to, for example, remove Arctic primers from their SARS-CoV-2 alignments before making uh, a consensus assembly. Um, but with any external application, be it IVAR or otherwise, I really take the same general approach. And for these videos, I've tried to distill everything into three simple steps. Uh, the first of which is the installation of the tool on your CLC genomics server environment. Uh, the second step is writing a shell script to wrap the tool into a single and static executable and the third step is the configuration of the external application using the genomic server web interface so hopefully by the end of this series you'll see the pattern and structure in my approach and are then able to apply it and write external apps for any tool that your laboratory might need uh, so let's get into it all right, so the first step to writing this IVAR external app is the installation of IVAR onto our genomics server environment. And uh, I'm going to assume that you already have CLC genomics server installed and set up on your system and that you have access to the same things that uh, I've got here on my screen. So a terminal with uh, root privileges here on the right and the server web interface logged in as an admin user here on the left and um, just showing you on my terminal here that I've got the CLC genomics server installed in that uh, top level opt directory so if you can get your screen to look exactly like mine you should be good to go um, so now that we've got this let's full screen the terminal so we can get into the installation of IVAR all right, so when installing any tool, my preferred route is to use Docker images, if available. Uh, luckily for us, the State Public Health Bioinformatics Workgroup, or Staff B, has already compiled a Docker image for IVAR that we can use for our external application. So if we check the Staff B Docker Hub, we can see multiple Docker images for IVAR. Um, and for our external app, we're going to want to use the IVAR 1.2.2 Arctic version here. Um, and to install this Docker image, instead of using Docker itself, I actually would recommend using Singularity for these external apps, which is a container software similar to Docker, but with Singularity, uh, you don't need uh, pseudo privileges to run it. So this is important since non-admin workbench users will be executing these commands. So we need to ensure that they have the right access to do so. Um, and there are a number of ways to give non-pseudo user permissions to, um, to run Docker, you know, by defining specific Docker user groups and playing around with some of the CLC user access permissions. Uh, but I find that the easiest way around all of this is to just use Singularity. Um, and I already have Singularity installed on this environment, but if you need to install it on your system, you can follow the developer's instructions for installations uh, that will be linked below. And just to ensure that you have Singularity, you should be able to pull up the help menu by just executing the Singularity command with an H flag. 
Um, so once you have it set up there, we can use Singularity now to grab the Staff B Ivar Docker image. Um, and I try to store all of my relevant genomic server files in that op directory. Um, so first, I'm going to create um, a Singularity images directory in the top level op directory there. Um, so I'm going to run sudo, oh, sudo make directory opt singularity images and I need to use sudo there because I am uh, adding to that op directory. All right, so if you look in there, we have an empty directory that I'm going to change to. Um, and then to grab the uh, staff B Docker image, I can use sudo singularity build. Um, then I'm going to call this uh, the ivar 1.2.2. singularity image. Um, and then I can say that it's a Docker image, and then I can grab the link to the specific tag I want from the Staff Beat Docker Hub. Uh, paste that in there, and boom. All right, so I'm going to let this Singularity image build, and once it's finished, we can check to make sure that um, we have an ability to run this container with Singularity uh, to execute Ivar without root privileges. All right, so the singularity image for Ivar is built and you can see it here as a singularity image file in this singularity images directory uh, that we created um, for exactly this. And now we can test the functionality of Ivar um, with the singularity exec command. So we can run um, really from anywhere here. So singularity exec. Uh, and then we need to specify um, the singularity image uh, from which we will build the singularity container. In our case, it's the uh, Ivar uh, image that we we just created there and then you uh, specify the command uh, for us and just testing the functionality we can just use Ivar with the H command to see if we can pull up that Ivar help menu and boom just like that uh, you can see in these quick little steps using these staff B docker images and um, singularity to install uh, that image for Ivar um, that now we have um, this tool installed in our environment and executable without root privileges so step one complete all right so the next step is to write a simple script that wraps Ivar into a single and static executable. And before we write this, it's important to define exactly how we want our Workbench users to execute the external app. Uh, for this example, uh, here is how I want my Workbench users interacting with the Ivar trim command. Uh, so when they pull up the external app from their Genomics Workbench GUI, this is the command uh, that they'll be executing under the hood. Um, this first bit here is our singularity exec command to run a container based off that staff B Ivar image we built. Um, and this second half indicating the Ivar trim command. Uh, this I flag here specifies the read mapping input file to be trimmed. Uh, B flag to specify the primer bed file of relevance. Um, and this P flag indicating uh, the prefix for the final trimmed uh, BAM file. So if you're familiar with the Ivar trim command, having trimmed underscore read underscore mapping under this P flag means that we will expect a final output trimmed underscore read underscore mapping dot BAM file when Ivar trim is complete. And then this E flag indicates that I'd like to include reads without uh, primer read data in the final alignment as well. All right. Um, so to give Workbench users access to this command as a Workbench tool and to make uh, the external app configuration process as straightforward as possible, I wrap this into a simple shell script uh, that the server can execute. Um, this is the most complicated part of the process, but I think if you stay with me through to the third step of actually configuring the tool, uh, everything will click into place. 
All right, so first let's create an external apps directory under ops uh, to store these shell scripts. So I'm going to do sudo make directory ops external oh, external apps. Um, and from there, let's start writing in ivar underscore clc um, dot sh script for um, our external application. All right, so the first thing I'm going to include in this little script is a small shebang statement to make sure that it will be executed as a shell script. And then uh, I'm gonna set um, input positional arguments for the external apps. So the first of which are going to be Ivar trim input variables. Um, so the first two, or the only two we need there are the read mapping input file, and that can just be the first positional argument. Uh, the second is going to be that primer track uh, file of relevance. And then I'm actually gonna make a third positional argument. This isn't an IVAR input, um, but one of the requirements for configuring these external applications is that the, the, the command that you're configuring as an external app has to take in a parameter that defines the anticipated output file generated. So for that, I'm going to make a third um, positional uh, argument that is going to be the expected output file name and path. And we'll just call that Ivar output and allow that to be the third positional argument. All right, so the next thing I like to do is change um, the working directory to match the temporary uh, genomic server um, directory that was created for this app. So whenever you execute an external app, um, CLC Genomic Server will create a temporary working directory uh, to store all of the relevant output. Um, and for this case, I want to change to that temporary directory so that we can ensure Singularity is running from that directory and storing all the relevant IVAR output there. Um, if you don't do this step, Singularity will run from root and for IVAR, it'll store that um, final BAM file to root, which will be inaccessible um, for most users. So to do that, I can, uh, let me just actually make sure that I comment this out. So change to CLC genomics server external app temp directory. And I can grab that temp directory by using the dir name function for that output file defined in that third positional argument. Um, and then change to that temporary directory. Um, then I can have just a little uh, standard out statement for the user starting CLC genomics server external application IVAR v, oh, trim v1.2.2. All right, um, next is uh, to include the actual IVAR trim um, executable executable. So again, it's that singularity exec. Uh, then we're going to define the image there, singularity images. And I think we called it IVAR 1.2.2. Singular image. And then the command, the command itself is IVAR trim I flag. And then the read mapping input so hopefully if you're following along here you can see that this i flag is going to be populated um, by that first positional argument the b flag is going to be oh, primer track and then uh, p flag we're going to call the output um, trimmed read mapping and again using that e flag um, okay, and then so that's pretty much the base of it. Um, and then I always like to have a, a small little um, uh, check to make sure that we have the appropriate uh, output generated. So ensure output file is created. So let's just say it's a small if statement that says, you know, if this file doesn't exist, so we're going to say in that, not test, temp 
uh, directory, oops, directory. So we should be anticipating, sorry, um, the trimmed read mapping dot bam file in that temporary directory. So if that doesn't exist, we can just have a nice helpful uh, standard out statement and exit with one, exit code one, and then close that if statement. Uh, so yeah, this is it. This is the very simple shell script um, to wrap this singularity statement um, into a static executable. Um, and then it also just takes these three positional arguments, the first two of which being relevant to Ivar trim itself. This third one defining um, the anticipated output file, which is relevant for configuring these external apps. And then this little statement here to make sure that we change our working directory to that temp directory created to make sure that singularity is run um, in, the, in the proper location in generating the IVAR files in that temporary directory for us. All right, so here is our um, executable. Oh, and then we want to make sure that it has executable privileges right there for our configuration. Actually, before continuing, I did see one little error here. We are using that variable there, so make sure that we have that dollar sign to indicate that. All right, so once you fix that, step two, complete. All right, so the third and final step to creating this IVAR external application is to just configure the, um, the application itself using the uh, genomic server web interface, which is where I am um, here now, logged in as an admin user. So if you go to the external applications uh, tab, you can see I already have three um, external apps written, Ivar Trim being one of them, um, but I'm going to go through the process as if I'm creating it um, for the first time just like you are. So if you go into new configuration, uh, the first thing you're going to do is name your application. So in our case, we went Ivar Trim and we're going to put the version in there, version 1.2. And then in the command line section, you're going to specify what the explicit command you want this external application um, to run on the genomic server environment. And so for us, we want it to run that shell script that we just wrote. So that is going to be in that ops directory, uh, external apps, uh, I think we called it ivar underscore clc.sh. And then if you remember, as we wrote this, there were three positional arguments, the read mapping input um, and the primer track input, both of which were IVAR variables. And then we had a third positional argument uh, specifying the IVAR output file, that BAM file um, that we should expect if everything goes well. So we're going to include those positional arguments in curly brackets so then we can configure them um, down below and you'll see what happens there. So let's do read mapping input and once we put that in curly brackets there you can see this general configuration table starts to populate. Um, then primer track and we should see another one pop up there and then IVAR output. Okay, so you can see everything in curly brackets um, will populate its own uh, line here in this general configuration tab. And so we can start defining what uh, the interaction is going to look like for the users um, with these curly brackets. So for read mapping input for the user, that's going to be a user selected input data. Um, in this case, it's going to specifically be a BAM file. Um, and then for the primer track, that is also user selected input data. And for this, we want that to be bed file. Um, and then the IVAR output is actually the output file from the command line tool. And uh, based on our um, shell script, uh, and that P flag, we should be expecting a trimmer, oh, trimmed read mapping dot bam file as the output. Um, unfortunately, there is no default bam uh, importer here, so we have to go to this non or no standard importer or high throughput sequencing importer option there. And 
so we're going to define that here. We're going to add new and we're going to make it uh, this BAM file here. And this is specific to being able to import BAM files, obviously. So we're going to edit the parameters. Uh, so it's going to be the IVAR output. And because it's a, uh, a BAM alignment file uh, with CLC, that's going to be a track uh, where we need a reference uh, associated with that. So we're going to select the reference file and in my environment, I think I have it here, IVAR validation workflows, oops. I have the um, SARS-CoV-2 uh, reference file as a default option uh, because for the most part, I'll be using uh, this tool for SARS-CoV-2 trimming. Um, but uh, by unlocking this uh, icon here, you allow the user to, to use this tool with, with any reference uh, that they care to use. Um, so once that is done, I think once we have the external command there, uh, this should change. I think I actually have to save it to make sure that it goes, but um, I don't want to save it because I don't want to overwrite my existing um, application there. But so that, that's pretty much it. That's all the steps. So you write the command line tool with those three positional arguments. You define them, the first two, as user input with the specific uh, file type. And then you define the output using that third positional argument there from our shell script and um, you define what that's gonna look like um, for the external app. And then for, for this BAM file, we had to use that high throughput sequencing importer um, and defined it uh, to be that IVAR output uh, tracked with um, that reference file. All right, and let me just see if I open this here. Yeah, so if you did do that linking right um, with that uh, high throughput sequencing BAM importer, this is what your final uh, file should look like there. Uh, one other thing I also like to enable is the stream handling. So um, creating a plain text file for that standard output. Uh, this is super helpful for troubleshooting any kind of issues um, that may arise. So uh, that's the last little thing um, that I like to configure there. All right. So step three, complete. All right, so once you have all that configured from a uh, CLC genomics workbench um, that's connected to that genomics server environment, um, you should see within your toolbox under your external applications that IVAR trim uh, external app available to you. Um, and so to just close this out, I wanted to show you uh, what it's going to look like for your workbench users if you've got this whole thing set up uh, properly. So when you click that external tool, uh, you're going to see, okay, it's going to CLC server application. And here are those um, user defined input variables uh, that we specified in that um, web interface with those curly brackets. So that first one being the read mapping input and um, the primer track. Now this first one needing to be a BAM file and this primer track needing to be a bed file. Um, and then here also is the reference that's going to be associated with that uh, final BAM file uh, to be imported into the system here. And uh, as you saw earlier, I selected this SARS-CoV-2 uh, as a default reference genome, but as a user, I can change this uh, if needed. So uh, with read mapping, I can, I've already populated this with some, uh, a BAM file um, of SARS-CoV-2 read data that was generated with the Arctic V3 protocol. So for primer track, I'm gonna use these V3 primers that I've already uploaded into my environment and then keep that SARS-CoV-2 reference genome the same. All right, and then I'm gonna populate that to an output directory and let that run. Once this finishes, I'll uh, show you um, what that output uh, might look like. All right, and that just took a couple minutes to complete and here are the output files um, you can expect from uh, this external app. So it's gonna show you that it exported the BAM file to the genomic server as well as the bed file. 
um, and then imported the final uh, BAM file, and here's the logs associated with that. And um, here is the standard out um, from the external app. If you remember, we configured uh, the external app so that it would create a plain text file for that standard out, and this is the result of that. Um, so there is that. And then here is the final uh, trimmed read mapping um, as a, a track associated with the uh, SARS-CoV-2 reference genome um, that, we, that we selected there and letting this load for just a second. And boom, there you go. Here is the final track output uh, from Ivar Trim. And there you go. So that is how to wrap Ivar Trim into an external application. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to post them below and uh, we're going to try to get to as many uh, as we can. Um, but yeah, so the next follow-up videos after this are just going to be how to write Maft and Raxmel into external apps as well. And I think you're going to see um, that the process is really uh, very similar to what we just went through with Ivar. We're going to install the tools, we're going to write a shell script to wrap it, and we're going to configure it. So uh, we'll see you in the next two videos.